What is your why? My why is I had a lot of fun. I really enjoy playing basketball. It's my favorite hobby. Uh, I really had the chance to play in uh, different scenarios and every day going to practice. Uh, I really enjoy. So that's, that's the main reason why I'm in love with basketball. Over the years, has your why changed at all? You know, you've been through, you know, you've traveled different teams, different countries, national team, you, you have a long resume, but over the years, has it changed at all? Or is it, is it still as strong as it was when you first started playing? Obviously, when you have a long career, there are up and downs, but the, the main focus has to be on doing what you are capable to do and, and really uh, get back to the basics when their things are not going well and enjoy the day by day. Um, that's the, the biggest challenge that I had to face. Uh, get back when the things uh, were wrong to, 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 the, to the love for the game and to the love for the routines. Can you tell us, what, what has the game given you? A lot, a lot. From the personal point to, to, the, prof, to the basketball uh, uh, point. So, I got a lot of friends, I met a lot of people, I got a great experience in different countries, different cultures, uh, languages, so uh, I'm very fortunate to, to be in the, uh, to, to, to have the, the career that I had and, and keep going, playing for Real Madrid, that is uh, my, my dream club from the beginning, from the, for all my life, so I'm very fortunate and I, uh, working every day to, to get the goals that I want to accomplish. When you clear your mind and, and your mind and think about why you're still playing, like, what do you think about? Because I know we just discussed, you know, you're done with national team. So, like, what do you think about when, it, you know, when you clear your mind about still playing? Uh, there is a lot of pressure and responsibilities when, you, when you're playing at this level. But the, the way that, that I enjoy every day is uh, what gives me, the, give me the, the, the gas to, to keep going. Uh, I think uh, the, 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 biggest, the biggest thing is we are playing a game and we have to treat it as, as a game with the pressure, with the, with the focus that is needed. But at the end of the day, we grow up playing basketball, having fun with our classmates, teammates, friends. And that's the, that's the, the, the biggest reason that, the, that I want to, to, to create every day. Like, what's the hardest thing you've had to give up? Like, what kind of sacrifices does it take to become, you know, to play as long as you had and have, you know, and also um, be as great as you have over, for, you know, consistently over, over a decade now? Yeah. We put a lot of work. We don't have time. Uh, the, the time that we wanted to be with our friends uh, at the beginning, then family, kids. So that time that you are taking from them, it has to be uh, worth, you know? Uh, so. Uh, every day I step in the gym, I, 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 I feel like uh, I had to give my best to keep, to keep doing what I, what I really like because I'm, I'm losing the time that uh, I, would be, I would be happy to have. But uh, if you put in a balance, uh, uh, it's worth it, all the, the work that we, we put in. Um, when it's all said and done and you're finally, you play your last game and you know, you're retired, what do you want people to remember you for? as a basketball player, and not as a basketball player, but also as a person. That I gave my best. Uh, and when they, they remember me, they, 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 I want them to remember as a, as a player that I really like uh, to, play, uh, to, to play basketball, who enjoy, who got a passion to, to, to play and win. And that would be, you know, my, my ideal uh, circumstance. Well, kind of spinning into to like the future of basketball and things of that nature. There's you know tons of not just only young Spanish kids, but just young kids in general who wish to be like you or want to be like you. You know, when they get older and they get to the, the level professional, what kind of advice would you give to those players? Enjoy every day, and have fun. There is times that we had a lot of pressure and it would be tough times to to go through. But at the end of the day, like I said before, this is a game and you have to enjoy. And, and, um, and the passion that you put every day, it will be very important to, to, to achieve the, the goals that you are planned to, to, to get. You say Real Madrid was your dream team as a little kid. Um, like, what does it mean wearing that jersey and like representing that club? 
Yeah, it's a club that uh, I grew up watching and, and seeing how they were winning, how they, the passion that they have and, you know, being able to be here in Madrid, playing for Real Madrid uh, for, for several years, uh, going uh, after, after the first part to, to the States to get back to play in the NBA, then going to Russia, Italy, and they had the possibility to, to be back here and, and fight again in, in, the, in the Spanish League, in the EuroLeague, to get the titles, is very special. So uh, I don't give it for granted. I know I'm a privilege, and I will give my best until, until the end. Um, we're going to go back a little bit and talk about your path um, to where you are right now. So you left Terranife at a very early age to follow your basketball uh, dreams, joined an elite basketball school called Siglo, Siglo XXI, yeah, 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 right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, how, did, how did you make that decision, and how hard was it to like leave home at such a young age? It wasn't easy. I mean, I'm from Tenerife, uh, the Canary Islands, with a lifestyle, uh, with the good weather, uh, being with my family, with my friends. So going going to a different city to to achieve the dream of being a basketball player. At that time, you don't really think about become a professional. You just want to go step by step and, and enjoy uh, the process. But uh, looking back, uh, that helped me a lot to be a, a, a better person, uh, more mature, and, and ready for the challenges that in the future uh, will come. Um, you have any <laughs> desire in the future to start a team there? Did start what? To start your own team? Do you have any kind of like desire to do that? Maybe I, something like how kind of like a Tony Parker did, you know, he went mm, and put money into a team. I don't really know. You know, I think at the point that, that when everything finishes, he uh, will, it will be more open to, to, to face different challenges. But of course, I want to help the young, the young players. I, I enjoy being with them. I got my camp in Alicante and Tenerife. Uh, I like to be uh, around the youth program to see how they develop, uh, to see how I can help them uh, now in Real Madrid. So that's, that, of course, is one of the, the, the good things that the, be, uh, ha having this career will allow me to, to, to give uh, some uh, advice to, to, the young, to the young players and try, try to help them on the way to, to the top. Um, in 2014, you won a gold medal at the U18 champions, uh, European Championships, and then two years later, you were a world champion with Spain. How great was it? Uh, was that run, and how important was it, like, for you, you know, representing your, your country, and then like also at such a young age, remaining humble? Yeah, that was a, a dream come true. First, the winning the under 18 tor European tournament, it was. A, it was key because it allowed me to, to be in the first team in Estudiantes uh, and, be, and be ready to, to face the, the professional stage. And then winning the World Championship at that point, I knew it was important, but when you grow up and, and, you, see, and you look back and, and see how we did, uh, you give more, more credit to, to, to that achievement. And both of them were very important in terms of uh, getting to the next step. Uh, in my career. Is, is there more pressure for the national team or for EuroLeague, Real Madrid? Or? When you want to win and when you are on the, lane, on the line to, to win, there is pressure always. Uh, you are playing for your country, everybody is watching, uh, everybody is uh, helping you to, to get to, to, to the top. And then when you're playing for your club, you spend 10 months working every day with the same guys, with the same coaches, and, and getting ready for, for the big moments of the season. So those are different. Uh, playing with the national team is a short term because you only spend uh, six to eight weeks. And then with the club, you spend 10, 11 months uh, fighting every day, uh, facing the challenges that you have uh, uh, during the season. So both are, are, are great experience. And, uh, I've been very fortunate to, to be successful with, with, with the national team and also with my clubs. You made your year league debut um, at 18. Um, and then at some point you made a decision to go to the States and go to the NBA. Um, and then after six years, you came back to your league. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that journey, the decision you made to go to the NBA and then, you know, coming back to Europe mm. to play and like how 
those years in the in the NBA kind of helped you be a better, maybe a better player or more, you know, or however that works, a better professional. I I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, growing up, I always had a dream, a dream of uh, playing in the NBA. That's the the, the biggest challenge for every player. Uh, I got the opportunity to be on the draft with 20 years old. I was playing Estudiantes, I played Euroleague, the, the year after I played Eurocup, and I felt ready. I felt uh, ready to keep developing uh, as a player, as a person, and it helped me a lot. Uh, I spent three years in Portland, being in a, in a great team, in a great uh, uh, organization, atmosphere, uh, knowing different people, different culture, and uh, playing, playing there was a, a dream come true, uh, playing against players that they, I had, uh, uh, I, I've been watching all my life growing up. It was uh, an, an, amazing, an amazing experience. But at the same time, uh, uh, I needed to, to be in a different, in a different uh, environment. Uh, that's when I decided to come back to Madrid. I think it was a great choice for me because it allowed me to to be uh, very successful, uh, winning the titles, uh, getting experience playing, playing with a with a with a, a group of guys that we become very close, and you know being being uh, that that fortunate to to win at home is very important and in a club such as Real Madrid. Speaking of uh, being close with some players, you know, I don't know if, if a lot of Spanish or Europeans are aware of you and Rudy's nickname when you guys play together, Spanish connection, anything, yeah. any kind of assist, any pass, any steal, anything you guys did together all over the airway, Spanish connection, Spanish connection. Yeah, yeah that, uh, <laughs> Tell me about that a little bit, like that, that actual connection between you two and how you guys have always had like maybe like a sixth sense between each other like you know like when he takes off the passes is waiting for him in the air or the back doors whatever the case may be that was an amazing year uh, we ended up being second or third in the west uh, that was rudy first year he came he came uh, that year to portland that was my third year uh, we got a young group of, of players very talented and that connection that we have in the national team the previous years helped us a lot to to be connected on the on the court, and but really the environment in Portland, in the city, in the club, in the organization was uh, really really special. And I had great memories. I spent uh, three fantastic fantastic years there. I still have friends. Uh, I talk to to people from Portland, so uh, I really really have great memories from from that part. You're a bit of a trailblazer. No pun intended. Um, uh, in regards to Spanish, not only Spanish players, but Spanish guards, um, you were the first Spanish-born player to play in, in Moscow and Seska. Um, what was that like being there and, and playing for such a historic club? Yeah, after being in Philly, in my 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 the season that I was there with the Sixers, uh, I decided to be, you know, in a in a different. In a different project, the uh, NBA was more short, short term. I needed a medium term. So Cheska offers that, uh, being ready to to win, to compete, to be in final fours and at the highest level. Also, I thought it was important for me to have a different point of view in a in a different uh, club uh, out of Spain. Uh, and being called by Cheska was an honor. Uh, they are. Uh, a great organization. At that point, they got great players. They didn't won the, the year before, but two years before, they, they they had won the the Euroleague. So the team was set up to to win it again. Uh, my first year there, we lost in semifinals against Real Madrid in the final four, and we couldn't get the title. But my second year in 2018, we were able to 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 win, and it, it was it was really special being. Uh, that far from my hometown, from my home, and, and be in a, with a group of guys that it was really, really special. Uh, we had a great connection, and we were all uh, on the same page to to get the title, uh, and we, we really enjoyed it. Yeah. So speaking of titles, you have two already. Um, I mean, you have a long list of accomplishments so far. I mean, like what's left if if there is anything left? Like what what outside of your love for the game? From a winning perspective, what are you 
still searching for, looking for, playing for. Yeah. When you are younger, you look uh, ahead with more time. Uh, but now, I really enjoy day by day. Uh, we play here in Madrid, in Palacio, every game, especially Euroleague games, when the atmosphere is really special, playing against the best in, in Europe. Uh, I really want to, to, to have fun, to, to enjoy, to be focused on, on those games. And then whatever comes, it will come. But I, I, I think I, I'm in the moment that I had to be, you know, really uh, focused on what I'm doing every day. Um, as a point guard, you know, you're usually the, the coach on the floor. You're the person in charge to galvanize your teammates, keep everybody involved, not let people get yeah. upset, text, blah, 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 blah. Like, speak to that a little bit. Like, how do you feel any additional? You said there's always pressure, but like, how have you been able to, you know, maintain such a level head? Because of all your league players over history, you're one of the most beloved players, you know, to any club. So like, tell, talk a little bit about that. Like, how is that? As a point guard, I had to understand that I'm the extension of the head coach. Uh, and I have to put on the court what the head coach wants. Uh, trying to get everybody, not, ha it's not the word happy, but everybody comfortable. Uh, and that's uh, a biggest part. I do naturally because I'm doing for 25 years. So I feel like uh, the role that I, that I have during my career has been just that. You know, to make everybody comfortable on the court, to try to cover the needs that the team needs in any moment. Uh, we know uh, there will be games that I will be better or not, but either on the court or in the bench, I need to, to help the team to be on the right way. You seem to be thinking basketball 24 7. Um, but what do you do to disconnect from the sport when you do get a chance? No, it's easier. I have three kids, so being with them, uh, it takes me, uh, it takes my head out of the, the, the game. Uh, we really enjoy at home with the family, with my wife, with the kids to, you know, to do different things who can uh, create that different uh, atmosphere uh, besides basketball. Obviously, when the big games comes uh, with the playoff, with the, with the cup here in Spain, with the final four, uh, it's hard to get out of the, that mood. But uh, as much as I can, you know, being with my, with my kids, um, with my wife, uh, give me that time to, to reflect and to, to relax. Where do you see Spanish basketball in the next five, 10 years? It's been amazing. It's been a great journey for, for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, we had really players who were able to, to lead her, uh, with a great leadership, with uh, great skills and, and winners. Uh, but that, I think, uh, it will reflect on the young generations. They are still winning the championships. So when they, when they get to the point to be pro and to, be in the big, to play in the biggest stage, they are ready because they felt that pressure and they were able to, to, to win. So, you know, the, the, it will be tough to, to keep winning and repeat the, the, the medals and the, um, and the accomplishments that we have done for so many years. But I think we have a, a, a good group of young guys and the new generation will be, will be able to, to keep, I don't know if at the same level, but in a really good level. Speak a little bit about rivalry. Um, obviously you play now for Real, so your, your natural rival is Barca in your career. Outside of you playing for a team, do you have a team that's just like whenever you play them, it's like, you know, it's, that's that's the team you look for, you, like you get up for the most. You want to play them the most. You want to beat them the most. Like losing to them, maybe you don't sleep. Is there a team outside yeah. of Barca that you play against? I mean, against Barca, you know, every game is going to be important. It will be a lot of attention from from everywhere. Uh, we feel the the week that we play them is uh, you know is. Uh, a uh, heavy week and we, we have to be ready. But then when you play teams like for, to, to get in the, in the playoff, uh, to be in the playoff, uh, final four games. So you have to understand there are going to be a lot of moments during the season that you need to have that heavy pressure and you need to know how to handle as a team. And as much as the, we, we work on that and we be uh, able to, to, to accept, will be better and we'll be more ready in the in those situations. 
Let's talk about when the, your, your, your signature look in, in your beard. You know, you have a, a Adidas brother and James Harden. Who, who, is the, who is the original beard? Uh, you know, uh, it's been a long way. Uh, I started letting my, my beard grow uh, after the Olympics in, in 2012 in London. And I like it. And, and I had, I had the, a good season, the, the period, so I kept, I kept going until this point. I'm Sergio Rodriguez, and this is my wife.